Hello all, I am Pavan Akhil, Master Trainer and Content Developer at FinCurious. I welcome you all to yet another session that is Recruitment Process. What exactly is Recruitment Process? You must be having a doubt what exactly is recruitment. Recruitment is nothing but an employer is hiring somebody to his company as an employee that is called recruitment. Not only an employer and employee, in every organization, basically if you see a small grocery store also, a small helper would be required. Any person who is hiring for that company, that is called recruitment. So let us see step by step what exactly is this process. On the screen you can see, so every organization requires human resources to operate smoothly and efficiently. Obviously, right, every company will be having a human resource manager, HR manager. We often call him HR manager, where we often go to him, ask for the leave, ask for the uh, whatever it is. Like we will be asking him so many things, but he will be refusing all the things. He will give what he wants to give. So in the same manner, every company will be having a human resource manager. That human resource manager will be managing all the human resources, what and all required for that particular company. So for a company, if the company wants to work smoothly and efficiently, that human resources are important. That is what they're telling here. So HRM plays a crucial role. So we'll see the steps in the recruitment process. It would be depending upon the company to company. Usually this recruitment process might be different from each company to company, but still majority of the points mentioned here will be the same. Even if you are an employee like, or a fresher who wants to go to a job, it is very crucial for you to understand the process of recruitment. Even if you are, if you are watching this video, even as an employee or an employer, both ways it is important for you. You can understand the recruitment process. For employees or freshers who wants to go to a job, it is very much important. So let us see the steps in recruitment process one by one. So there are so many steps given here. Need not to be same in every company, depends upon the company to company, but still this would be the majority of the company follow these steps only. So let me take you to the recruitment process step by step. You can see here, yeah, steps in hiring and appointment. The hiring and appointment process typically involves the steps. You can see first step is identify the need of hiring. So recruitment is nothing but hiring the new people, right? First of all, why you want to hire the new people? You need to identify the need. If I want a sweeper to clean my company, I need to hire a sweeper, right? So that need should be there. If already there is a sweeper in my company, there is no need to hire again that sweeper. If there is a charter accountant or if there is an accountant for a particular a company to do the accounts of that company, then there is no need for me to again uh, hire a new accountant for my company. So you need to find out in which position, in which place there is a vacancy. That is the first step. Identify the need of hiring. So the process begins when the department or a team identifies the need for a new employee. If you want a new employee for that particular department, then that would be your need for hiring. Then what would be the, what would be the second step? The second step would be job analysis and preparation of JD. We often call it as JD. JD is nothing but job description. So what is this job analysis? So being as a HR of a company, HR will be knowing all the things of the company. So he will be the person who actually prepares all this job description and analysis. So what he will do, he will analyze what is the role of the particular person. If a new employee is joined, the role of the particular employee to be done and what exactly that particular person needs to be doing in that particular time frame. So job description is nothing more. You can see here a format of a job description as a junior accountant. For a junior accountant job, so this would be the job description. So what would be the purpose of the job, key responsibilities that employee needs to take, the, take those responsibilities and minimum experience. Why would be the minimum experience? For freshers, if a company is taking, they might not have, they may not be happy taking a freshers for a, a specific job. So they might need some experience. So in this experience column itself, they will mention if they're looking for, they are looking for the freshers or they're looking for the experience standards. So every company, wherever a hiring is going to happen, this JD plays a vital role and this JD would be prepared by the human resource manager and he will be understanding each and everything of the particular job. 
this analysis of job and preparation of job description is very important. You can see by seeing this job description, the person who wants to uh, actually appear for the interview, he needs to understand what is the role of that particular job. So by seeing the job description itself, he will understand, oh, this is the role I need to perform, whether I am capable or not. So if I am capable, I'll apply for that job. So that is how the job description is important. And then approval and budget. So for HR, it is very really tough task for the HR to get the approvals from the higher management and budgeting issues also will be there. So higher management will tell, will give only 20,000 or 30,000 for that new employee to be hired. So, but new employee with experience of two to three years, they might be expecting around 35, 40 or even 50 also. So that uh, whatever this HR plays, right? That will be a very tough task for the HR getting the approvals done by the higher department and budgeting those things and negotiating with the new employees, that is a difficult task for HR, but it is how it is. So depending upon the organization, that whenever a new position is going to be created, for that prior approvals and budgeting would be done immediately. And then sourcing strategy. What is this sourcing strategy? This sourcing strategy is nothing but the organization determines how it will source the candidates based upon like right now, you know, various uh, job portals, right? So how to find the right candidates for the open position. This could involve posting the job on various job portals using a recruitment agency or internal employer portals or other methods. So when you are looking for, in a company, when the HR is looking for the new people, he may not get immediately as if like uh, he goes to a stall and buy a fruits, right? In the same manner, he needs to post those jobs in LinkedIn or various job portals like Naukari, et cetera. And even if there are internal employees with them already, so they can even ask those employees to give the reference. So there, this is called sourcing strategy, sourcing a person to join in a company. This is one of the strategy followed by the team. So then application submission. So candidates submit their applications and resumes through the designated channels which may include an online application system or portal or through email. So if you're having a separate online application system for the resumes to be uploaded, they will upload those resumes, the uh, candidates will upload those resumes there. Or else if you, have, if you give the email ID down below in the post, in the job description, we are posting this in the various job portals, they will directly mail their resumes. So the submission of application is nothing but whenever the HR receives the resume of the Candidates that is called application submission. Then resume screening. So you ever wondered being as an employee or being as a fresher who are applying for various jobs, when you are applying for various multiple jobs and you're in the various job portals and you're sending emails to various people of your resumes, but still you might not get a call from that particular people because there is something called resume screening. So the HR who is HR, human resource manager, or the hiring managers who are going to hire you, they will actually screen you by seeing your resume itself. If there is a physical resume, they will see, or if there is an email and whatever it is, whichever form they would have received those resumes, they will see those resumes. Okay, first important thing, they'll actually see the formats, how you are presenting yourself. The resume building is very tough task if you don't understand how you want to present. See, you need to understand the important pro procedure that is called building your CV or resume. Because if you don't know how to present yourself, then nobody is going to hire you. That is the most important task. How to build your resume or CV is the most important thing a fresher or an employee must know when they are applying for the new jobs. They need to clearly mention the role and responsibilities they have taken before or if the, he is a fresher in which stream he is actually wanted to perform. All those things will be uh, there. We'll uh, actually, actually we, would have we have already connected so many sessions on this. If, if needed, please comment down below. We'll again uh, uh, take those sessions for those resume building on CV. Our team will take those things. So let me let us know whether you want those sessions. So coming back here, resume screening. So the hiring managers who will be the hiring persons, they will actually screen your resumes. They will see, they will throw it in the dustbin, simple. It, it, it might be harsh, but it is a real fact. 
they will not even look into your resume like what and all you have written once a person is going to look your resume the high, important and highlighted factors should be bold and it should be visible clearly that is what it is like whenever a person is going to see your resume so that resume should be easily understandable that is where those people will actually screen your resumes and based on that job description and whether that person is eligible for that or not they will screen and they will throw it off and whoever is actually like they will uh, i told you right like they will screen so two to two to three people will screen and they will be some people will be out uh, outlisted so those people who are listed out will be called for the interview so the short listed candidates are invited to the interviews and this can include again multiple round of interviews depending upon the different stakeholders in the company sometimes in a startup company there might be two to three co-founders all the co-founders want to take the interview in some companies there would be only one person who is taking care of hiring so only the hiring manager will take the interview depending upon the size and uh, size of the organization the interview process will be there you can see here Inter different round of interviews with different stakeholders such as HR, hiring managers, and team members. Depending upon the requirement and need, the interview process will be happening. So, what are the general steps of interviews? General steps of interviews might be one might be telephonic interview or initial screening. So, the normal HR or a hiring manager will directly call you on the phone, and over the call itself, they will understand who exactly you are. So based on that also, they will initially screen you out whether you're fit for this job or not. And then HR round. These are personal one-to-one -one interviews will be there between applicants and the HR. And then technical round. So if there is any te technical round means nothing but if, for example, if you're applying for a specific role, in that specific role, technicality might be required. So the technical round might be taken by the other person. So HR will be taking in a normal way, but technical round will be taken by the other people based on the proper skills you're having or not. And then there would be a reference and background check. What is this reference and background checks? So basically, you will, if you are a fresher, they would verify your background. So which college you are from, what is the percentage and all those things. And if you're already an employee who has worked in various companies, so they will check your conduct. What is that conduct? Your behavior, whether you're good or not and they will just inquire in the background that is called background check in the previous company they just call them and ask how that person is like how the employee is performing in your company all those things they will check that is called background check and then so reference check reference check is nothing but as i earlier told you here in in the resume screening where i have told you yes yeah in the sourcing strategy in the sourcing strategy, I told you, right, internal employee reference. If any employee, internal employee, refer that particular person to this interview, then those reference checks also will be happening. So talking to the earlier employees, managers, colleagues, who referred that, that, that particular person. And then decision and issue of the offer letter. So the decision will be with the hiring managers who are going to hire that particular person. And if they actually believe that he is the right person, then they will issue the offer letter. What is this offer letter? Offer letter includes job, job details and designation, salary, benefits, paid, uh, like uh, coming in time, out time, start date, like what is what would be the uh, conditions of the employment, company equipment, what are they going to provide, all the policies, of the company would be there in this particular offer letter. They will mention each and everything in this offer letter. So is this offer letter is actually, uh, is it called as an appointment letter? No, offer letter is not an appointment letter. Offer letter is just an offer where the company is interested to hire that particular person. So when will this offer become an appointment? So negotiation and acceptance. So when, when the company is issuing the offer letter, what happens? The candidate or the person who appeared for that interview start negotiation. What is this negotiation in that offer letter? They might be, a uh, company might be giving only 30,000 rupees as the salary. But the employee who is going to join, he might ask 40,000. 
So then the HR manager again comes into play. He will actually tackle the situation and both ways like HR will be managing both the company and even this particular person who is going to jo join the job also, right? So both people he needs to satisfy and he will actually negotiate and both the people, both the parties basically, both the parties will negotiate and they will accept on some terms and conditions. So once both the parties agree, the candidate formally accepts the offer. So how this acceptance of this offer will be coming? So they might send an official email so that I am, uh, after, uh, I am actually agreeing to the terms and conditions and I am accepting the offer letter. That, uh, that can be done, most of the cases. Salary negotiation done even before rolling out the offer also. It depends upon the various company to company. So overall, if you see, HR manager will be, play the crucial role in negotiation and acceptance of this particular thing. And once the employee accepts this offer letter, then documentation process starts. What is this documentation process? All the documents related to that particular employee, the paperwork would be taken. So the offer letter has properly countersigned by the candidate, PAN card, other card, bank account details, passport size photos, educational certificate, recent pay slips, experience certificate, relieving letters, PFESA details, all the income tax details, deductions details, all the details will be taken by the HR to ensure the smooth onboarding process. What is onboarding process? This onboarding process is nothing but an employee induction program, welcoming a new employee to the company and explaining him what and all he needs to perform in that particular company. So you can see here, meet and greet. So first an employee comes, we will meet and greet him welcome to the company and he will be actually introduced to the team and then we will be explaining them the organization overview and then how the work policy should be there all those things should be explained and what is the role and expectations that person has to do in this particular company that will be explained and then process complaints performance standards review and feedback so these are these are the various things in a, in an onboarding process explaining what to do in this particular company to the new employee is called onboarding process. Very simple. And then issue of appointment letter. This is the legal and official document issued by the organization to the qualified and selected candidates, offering them a job and employment with the organization. So issuing the appointment letter is the formal step and crucial step in the hiring process. So you can see. Some companies even use a HR management system, human resource management system for the entire process and even issue offer or appointment letters document submission by candidates through the online portal. Some companies do like this and some companies will be giving physical letters also. It depends upon the company to company. I hope you understood what is the recruitment process in detail. So various steps basically. You could see here steps in hiring an appointment. So being a being as an employer in a company will follow these steps. If you are an employee who are a fresher who wants to join a new company, you need to understand to before applying a job, you need to understand these steps, right? If you don't know these steps, you might actually not perform very well in your interview. So if you want to perform very well in an interview, please be in advance understand the process of job description what is job description what exactly the role and responsibility you need to take in that particular company that is a crucial step if you understand the role and responsibility of that job it is easy for you to actually perform well in that interview the actually the people simple question like an employee who wants to join a new company the employee will ask basic questions he will not ask technicality very much the basic questions just <clears throat> The basic question he will, he will be asking is just introduce about yourself. That introduce about yourself is the key thing where many people will actually not perform very well. That is the important one. If somebody is asking you introduce about yourself, you don't start again telling my name is so and so I, I have qualified from this. Everything you have already written in that resume, right? Whatever is there in that particular resume, it is not required to again speak out from your mouth. You just need to explain this, what you are going to perform in that particular company for that specified role. Then it will be easy for you to crack any interview or a job. Thank you for watching the video.